This is 5-Minute Power Platform, where I'm doing short experiments with Dynamics, Flow, Power Apps, and more. Today, we're going to do a quick travel approval form using the Power Apps Canvas forms integrated into SharePoint. What we'll do is we'll start with a SharePoint list, and we'll customize the form in Power Apps. In that custom form, we'll include per diem rates or allowed expenses from an Excel file stored in OneDrive. And we'll also look up the requester's manager using the Office 365 connector. Once this is all done, we'll route it for approval in Flow, and then we'll save the approval results back into SharePoint. Since we'll be using the reporting hierarchy, it's good to know what that looks like in this organization. So the boss has the last name A, people below her have the uh, last name B, and everyone at the bottom has the last name C. We'll be getting permitted expenses called per diems from this U.S. government-based spreadsheet, and I've modified it slightly to combine city and state and put it in an Excel table format. If you want to see how this SharePoint list is built, I'll put the full build out at the end of this video. But for now, let's just take a look. You've got the requester and the approver, both people. You've got the location, the start and end date, the, hotel, the allowed amounts for hotels, meals, and incidentals, and totals, and an approval status and comments. So we'll start here in our SharePoint form, and we'll choose a custom form. So it's going to open up Power Apps. And once our Power Apps loads, we can go into Edit with the uh, SharePoint form selected, and we can add in some additional fields. And these are going to be the custom fields that we added to our list. So once those are added, we can collapse those, check the order. I like the order. So now let's go in, and we'll update our Excel file into OneDrive. This is going to be the data source for the locations and the allowed expenses, the per diem. So we'll drag this into OneDrive. And then the one thing we have to do is we want to make sure that we grant access to everyone on it. And so we'll do that here with grant access. We'll choose everyone and give them read only. Next, we'll go to the View menu and Data Sources, and we'll add our data sources. First, for OneDrive, we'll add in our spreadsheet. There it is, and because I created an Excel table in it, there's our table. Connect that. And then next, Office 365 Users, and this will allow us to get the requester's managers. We'll select that there, and now that's added as well. So now let's go back to edit the fields. We're going to change the type of card used for location. We're going to change it to a type called Allowed Values, which is really just a pick list. We're going to rename the pick list to Card Location Values. Uh, that way we can reference it a little more easily than the auto-generated names. And we want to change the items list here. So we need to unlock this card so it allows us to customize it in that way. And then we'll change the item to per diem. And that's going to be our per diem table from Excel that we connected. We're going to change the value to city-state. And so this pick list should now show the city-state values. Let's update the sort on that per diem table so that it sorts by city-state. Now we should be able to see our list there sorted as well. So now we'll move on to the allowed values, the per diem for the hotel and for the meals and incidental expenses. So we'll start by unlocking this field. That'll make it a custom field. That way we can set the display mode. We're going to set the display mode to view, and we'll do that again here. We'll unlock this, and we'll set the display mode to view on the meals and incidental expenses form or field as well. Once that's done, then we can pull the values off of the selected location from our data source in Excel. And so we'll do that. We'll just set the... Uh, card location value drop down we'll choose the selected item and then we'll choose the field for the hotel rate and then down below too we'll set the uh, value there we're just going to copy and paste it from above and we'll just change the field that we're referencing to on the fields with, within each of these cards we're going to format the text so that it shows as currency so right now it says parent default we're just going to cut that right out of there and we'll use the text function to format parent default with a dollar sign number 0, 0.00 format, kind of a standard currency format. We're going to copy this out of this one, and we're going to paste it in the one below, and now they'll both format as currency. So let's start by uh, setting the total to also be read-only. First, we'll unlock that card, and then we'll set the display mode to view. And now let's start populating values down there. So the total should be the difference of the sum of the hotel and the meals per diem times the number of days. So let's copy those values out of meals and hotel. Look, total looks good. So let's cut what we have there. And now let's multiply it by the number of days. We can see the start date is data card value 5, and the end date is data card value 6. So we'll use the date diff function to do the difference in the number of days between those. So data card value 5, selected date. And data card value 6, selected date. And that'll give us the number of days. However, we need to add 1 to it because if they're on the same date, date diff will re return 0, and we want it to return 1. And then we'll multiply in what we pasted in there. And that'll be the number of days times the sum of the hotel and meals per diem. So we'll add in our text format there that we stole from the field above. And now that's uh, formatted as currency. So one thing I found is when I hit play on my Power Apps, I would get this no item to display. 
appears that's when there's no records in SharePoint, you'll get that. So it's save and public back to, publish back to SharePoint. And sometimes it can be a good uh, move to refresh your SharePoint site when you come back here too. But then when I click new, I can see my Power Apps, add in my requester. I've got my list loaded from my Excel file. Looks good. And now I've got my first record. When we come back into Power Apps now, we should be able to hit the play button here and get a better representation of how our Power App looks. There we go. Now it's all functioning too. And it's the same value that we saw from the first record. So next we need to set the approver to the requester's manager. So let's unlock this card and we'll set it to view only like we did to the others. And then next we need to be able to go into Office 365 with the through our connection and look up the requester's manager. To set the manager's name, we'll have to set the manager's claims identity. In Office 365, claims identities start with this string here, followed by the user's user principal name, which is usually the same as their email. Now, through the Office 365 users connector, we can't get the entire claims identity string, but we can get the user principal name. And so we're going to prepend this claims identity prefix uh, to the string that we add. Now, we need two, two values in order to set this. We need the display name of the user and we need their claims identity. So the display name is like the first and last name, and their claims identity is like that string above concatenated to their user principal name. Then we'll need to make this a JSON object, so we'll put curly brackets around it, and this is what we're going to use to set the manager's identity to. So for the default value of the approver, we're going to start adding in what we just saw on that, that slide. So a curly bracket, a display name, and then we're going to use the Office 365 users connector and use the manager v2 function out of that. That will give us back a display name, but we have to give it as a parameter the person whose manager we want. And from us, that comes from our requester. Data card value 2 is the name of the field here. We want the selected email. So it'll give us the email address of the requester. We'll add in a comma. Now we'll do the claims identity. We're going to put in that static string that we saw before, and then we'll append to it then the user principal name using the same function. So the Office 365 manager, but Instead of the display name, we're going to get the user principal name out of it. So this will then set the manager to that value in the SharePoint list. And we can see that Power Apps has already populated that with Betty Bosswoman, my supervisor in this organization. And so then the last thing we have to do is put in some validation on the start and end date. And to do that, we'll select the SharePoint integration and we'll choose the on save event. Let's cut out the submit form statement that's already there and we're going to add in an if statement. So we're going to add in the two uh, the two fields. We're going to say, uh, is the selected date from data card value 6, which is the end date? Is it less than the selected date from the, than the start date, the data card value 5? If so, we're going to notify the user and not submit the form. So we'll put in a message here that identifies what's going on. And if it passes this test, then we're going to submit the form. And so that's the end of our validation there. So now let's save and publish this back to SharePoint. And once you're in SharePoint, it's always good to give it a refresh as well. And then let's test this out. So we'll go into new. We'll call this one test 2. Put in a requester. We see Betty gets pulled in as the approver. It's at the location. It looks like the totals look good. So now let's set a start date that is after the end date. So we'll set the start date as the 23rd, the end date as the 22nd. And when I try to save it, hopefully our validation will work. We can see the uh, prompt up there, end date cannot be before the start date. So now if we go back in and fix that, we should see that it saves properly, and it does. So now let's go into create our flow for approvals. So we'll go to flow, create a flow at the top of the SharePoint site. We're just going to go through till we get to the templates. And we want this first template here, start an approval when a new item is added. So let's go through to the connections. And then what we basically want is mostly the template, the way it comes out of the box. So let's grab our SharePoint site and populate the site list there. And then the list name should come right of the drop down. Who do we want it assigned to? The approver email that our Power App set. And then everything else should be good the way it is. Now, we do want to make sure that our approver goes back into the SharePoint site. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add in another action here to update the SharePoint list. So we'll choose SharePoint, scroll down to Update Item at the bottom. And then we'll populate Update by Item again with the site address, the list name, the ID is given right there. That's the item that we've been working on. The title is required, so we'll just repopulate the title from the SharePoint item here at the bottom of the list. And then what we're going to do is we'll put in the comments from the approval and the approval status at the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll just use it as a custom value, and we'll just bring back the approval response. And those match our drop-down list items in SharePoint and the comments from the approval. Now, one thing about uh, the flow approvals 
is the approver that ends up doesn't have to be the approver that started because they could be rerouted to other approvers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to update SharePoint with the actual identity of the final approver. So if this was forwarded among several approvers, we're going to capture whoever final approved it. So what we'll do is we'll concatenate on that claims token, and then we'll add on the email address of the final approvers, and we'll reset that as the approver claims value back into the SharePoint site. So now let's run it through a quick test. So we'll put it in test mode, and then we'll go back to SharePoint, and we'll add a new record. So we'll click on new. Our form comes up. We'll call this one test three. We'll put in a requester. We see Betty Boss Bosswoman is populated, set a location, and then set a couple of dates. So now once we save this, we can check on our flow, and we should see our flow starts running. And it should be stuck at the approval. So now let's flip over to Betty Bosswoman and process the approval. So here we are as Betty Bosswoman. We see the approval, test three. We'll click approve, put in some comments. And now what we're going to do is then we're going to go back to SharePoint and make sure that these comments appear. Back in flow, we've got all green check marks. Everything looks good. And we've got them all down the yes side of the approval. And we see it's updated with look good and approve. So now let's uh, create a new one, and this time we'll test uh, having Betty route it to her supervisor and make sure that we can capture then the forwarded approver and get the final approver's name back into SharePoint. So let's finish creating this new one. This is test four. We'll put in some dates, and then when we hit save, it should go to uh, Betty Bosswoman for approval. So we'll hit save here, and let's flip over to Betty Bosswoman's view and flow to process the approval. So upon refreshing, we see test four. This time we're going to reassign it to Amy Allseeing. And then we'll submit the reassignment. Now, here we are as Amy Allseeing. Click Approve, do our final approval, say, OK, fine, you can travel. And then we'll come back here into SharePoint. We see that it's been updated with Amy Allseeing. And we've got the OK, fine comment as well. And so that allows us to capture kind of the full scope of the approval. So this has been a short tour through several of these technologies uh, in the context of a travel approval system, merging flow, power apps, and more. Uh, following this, then, I'll give a quick overview of how the SharePoint site was set up in case you want to set up yours in the same way. So we'll start by going up to create a new list. We'll call this travel approvals. And then once we've got the list, we'll start creating the fields that we need within it. And so we'll add uh, the requester and the approval as person columns. And so we'll do these. We're not going to allow group selection, and we're going to require at least the requester, um, possibly the approver. There's some error scenarios that aren't handled in here where maybe someone doesn't have a manager set up in Office 365 that we'd do in a full implementation we would need to consider. So we'll add the location as a text box. We'll add the start date as a date field, date only, no time, and the end date in the same way. And then we'll add numbers for the uh, allowed hotel. We'll do those as currencies. And the allowed meals. And then also the total will be a currency value. And then the final two fields are for the approver, both the comments as a single line of text, and also for the uh, for the approval result. And we'll do that as a choice. We'll do in approval and we'll default this value to in approval and then approve and reject just so we match what's going to come back from flow approvals.